So welcome everyone to our second and honestly, hopefully our last virtual Student Academic Awards and Re Recognition Ceremony. I'm Kim Blosser, President of Lord Fairfax, and it is so great to have you all with us this evening. Let me first start by congratulating the students that are being honored this evening. These are outstanding academic achievements and you should be very, very proud of your accomplishments. I know for myself, I didn't earn any degree all by myself. I had help and support all along the way. So I wanna say thank you to the family and the friends who are also joining us tonight for your role in supporting these outstanding students. This has been quite a year for all of you, and I honestly think every day about the disruptions you've had in your lives and how you've had challenges that honestly no other group of college students have had before. But despite all of those challenges, this week is the week of celebration, and it's a week the entire college looks forward to when we get to celebrate your success and when we get the honor of watching our students walk across the stage at commencement. So I wanna thank the faculty, staff, and administrative faculty who are part of this program tonight and all of those who've been part of your educational journey. Again, congratulations to each of you. And I'm gonna turn this over to our Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs, Dr. Ann Davis, who is gonna begin the awards ceremony. Thank you, President Blosser. Uh, good evening to our awardees and their families presenters and guests. I am Dr. Ann Davis, Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs here at Lord Fairfax Community College. And it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce this evening's award ceremony. As President Blosser mentioned, this event is the culmination of hard work and persistence, determination on the part of our student awardees, especially in the face of such unusual challenges that you have uh, faced and overcome this past year. Each of you has had to find the inner resources to stay focused on your academic journey and to persevere, and you have. And as Dr. Blosser mentioned, you undoubtedly had some folks uh, in, as part of your support network who were there for you. So I hope you find some time, uh, sometime this week to share with those important people in your life uh, that have provided you that support network and let them know how much it has meant to you. And finally, to all our awardees this evening, my sincere congratulations on your accomplishments. And we want you to know that we, you will go forth with our well wishes on whatever step is next in your journey. Congratulations. Good evening. I'm Jay Gillespie. I'm the Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. People hear that and they say, well, why is your school so important? What do you give us that um, our students want, can use, or what do they really need? And that's a good question. Um, what we need are good communicators. We need people who can think creatively. We need to understand other people and other cultures. We need people who understand the various forces that impact culture and history how we form our moral and social codes and how we create the structures that enforce them. And perhaps now more than ever, we need people and we need leaders that understand that our individual experiences are not in fact global experiences, that our individual experience is not the default experience. And these students tonight have excelled in these ways of thinking and have taken a major step, one of which I'm really proud of each of them for in becoming truly educated citizens. And we can use a lot more of them. My sincerest congratulations to each and every one of you, and you have a lot to be proud of. Hello, everyone. I am Allison Thompson, an instructor of communication at the Middletown campus, and I am here today to present the award for Award of Excellence in Speech and Drama in honor of Larita B. Jacobs. And this award is going to an amazing student who always showed his dedication in my public speaking course. I could tell that he always put a lot of theft thought and effort into all of his speeches and continue to improve throughout the entire semester. And not only that, he actually pursued public speaking outside of the classroom and entered into our student research symposium in the very first time that persuasive speaking was 
recognized as a category that students could compete in. And he actually won our inaugural edition of that. So I would just like to present this award to Matthew Haydu and congratulate him on all his accomplishments. Good evening. I'm Ruth Holmes, Associate Professor of English, and I'm here to present the Kogan Writing Award. The Kogan Writing Award is a scholarship established in honor and memory of Dr. Miles and Mrs. Felicia Kogan, a former professor of English at LFCC, by family and friends. All English faculty are invited to nominate outstanding students in their English 111 or 112 courses. The students are all given pseudonyms and their writing samples are judged and ranked by the full-time English faculty. I am happy to present the 2021 Kogan Scholarship to an exceptional emerging LFCC student writer, Jesse Anderson. Jesse graduated from high school in May of 2020 and plans to pursue an English degree. Inside and outside of school, she has been an avid reader, consuming sci-fi novels and all of Sylvia Plath's published works which has likely helped to inspire her own genuine voice and lyrical style. The writing skills she has honed and demonstrated in my class will serve her well and delight her future instructors, both at LFCC and when she eventually transfers to VCU. Good evening, I'm Clay Walthall, uh, adjunct instructor of art, and I'm here to present the Outstanding Achievement Award in Art this year's recipient of the Outstanding Achievement Award is one of those standout students an instructor will always remember. It's my pleasure to name Nathan Purai as our award winner for the 2020-21 academic year. He's earned an associate degree in liberal arts with a fine arts specialization and plans to further his studies by pursuing a bachelor of fine arts degree. Nathan is an internally motivated quality individual who possesses the focus and drive to establish a dynamic presence in his field. As an artist, he holds himself to a high standard. More than once, he remade a project because the first version didn't meet his expectations. Throughout his academic career, he's demonstrated a tough work ethic. While a full-time student, he put in a 40-hour week as an illustrator for an educational publishing company and produced freelance work. It goes without saying, he is achievement oriented and will be a welcome asset anywhere he goes. Congratulations, Nathan, you've earned this distinction. I'm Jim Brumbaugh, professor of economics. I have the pleasure of introducing Rita Rantone. She's a part-time student majoring in accounting. Originally from Indonesia, she moved here to be with her husband. She has two daughters, one of whom graduated from LFCC last year, and one who is currently dual enrolled at LFCC. She is an ESL student, and she is in the two-year accounting program and intends to complete it and transfer to a four-year university. She hopes to have a job in the future working to support local government or a local school, and she has a 4.0 GPA. I have one, one story to say, um, she took, both uh, courses with me, uh, scored the highest in both of those courses. And in one case, she actually corrected one of the quiz uh, questions. Um, she spotted that there was a mistake in the elasticity uh, for one of the problems and insisted it was incorrect. And I thought it was correct. And sure enough, uh, she was right. Uh, Professor Brumbaugh was wrong, and so was the textbook. And I think that attention to detail will serve her well as she moves on to become an accountant. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce Rita Rantone, Outstanding Achievement in Economics. Hello, I'm Lori Killo. I am the Assistant Professor of Education at Lord Fairfax. This year's award for Outstanding Achievement in Education goes to Emily Heatwell. Emily is earning her Associates of Applied Science degree in early child development. Emily has a strong work ethic and humbly sets and reaches high standards for herself. While managing her family and a full-time job in childcare, she has maintained a very high GPA and is a member of PTK. You know, today we know more about brain development in the first five years of life than we ever have. We know that early childhood professionals like Emily work hard to meet children's emotional and social needs, as well as their mastery of literacy and cognitive skills. 
what often looks like children playing is so much more. Quality early childhood professionals like Emily have a powerful impact on the development of sturdy brain architecture in the children they touch, preparing them for success in school. Emily holds the future of countless children in her hands, but Emily's impact reaches even further. You may have heard of NACI, the National Association for the Education of Young Children. Well, Emily is the president of the local chapter here called VACI, the Virginia Association for the Education of Young Children. It is a position she's held for the past two years. She has been a presenter at their conferences and in the larger surrounding community. In one example, Emily created and led professional development for VACI on adding music to storytelling to many professionals. Currently, she is part of a team writing a resiliency curriculum and planning a series of trainings to help other early child professionals better serve the children that they serve who come to school often with anxiety and worries far too great for their little shoulders. So beyond the direct impact she has on the lucky children to be in her care, she's contributing to the profession, training up other early childhood professionals. And I admit, working with Emily over the past couple of years, I think I have may, may have learned more from her than she did from me. When I asked her what hurdles she faced doing all that she has accomplished, she said, and I quote, I wouldn't describe it as a hurdle because I feel drawn to my career path. So Emily's hard work will continue because that's just who she is. But today, Emily, take a moment to bask in your success. Everyone wants success, but success only follows those who want it enough to make the effort and go the distance to get it. This award brings you our warmest congratulations. It is an honor to be selected by the faculty for this award, and it speaks highly of how well you and your work are perceived. Best of luck to you in your future, and congratulations. Welcome, everyone, to our celebration of student achievements. Even in a virtual world such as the one we're living in, such student recognition is wonderful and it's incredibly powerful. I'm Brent Kendrick, professor of English. On behalf of my English department colleagues at the Middletown campus, I am honored to announce that this year's Outstanding Achievement in English Award goes to Shannon Parente. Shannon loves language, she loves wordplay, and she insists upon linguistic precision, perhaps more so than any student I've been privileged to work with in many years. She has an uncanny ability to harness language and transport her ideas to new and uncharted territories. She knows the truth in Emily Dickinson's poetic line, there is no frigate like a book to take us lands away. Two of my English colleagues at Middletown, Professor Schaefer and Professor Van Curen, have been privileged to have Shannon in their classes too, and they sing her praises as well. Shannon is graduating with a 4.0 grade point average. Additionally, she will have the distinction of graduating as an honors program scholar. Finally, she is a member of Phi Theta Kappa, the International Honor Society of the Two-Year College. Shannon aspires to be a novelist. And in my creative writing class this semester, she developed plot summaries and in-depth character profiles for an 18-chapter novel that she's writing. Here's Shannon's one-sentence summary of the novel. The search for a missing patient challenges an experienced organ harvesting surgeon to face the fundamental questions of human dignity and relationships. She has completed chapter one, and it's titled The Light at the End of the Tunnel, and she will continue to write the novel in the months ahead. Even though Shannon hopes to become a novelist, she is exceedingly practical as well. She will be transferring to James Madison University, where she will focus on marketing, advertising, and editing, no doubt with an eye toward promoting her own novel. At Lord Fairfax, Shannon completed 18 credit hours in English, earning an A in each of the six courses, College Composition 1 and 2, Creative Writing 1 and 2, 
Survey of American Literature II, and Survey of World Literature. Additionally, she completed and earned an A in Humanities 298 Leadership Honors Seminar. Again, on behalf of my English department colleagues at the Middletown campus, I am honored to present this year's Outstanding Graduate in English Award to Shannon Parente. Heartiest congratulations, Shannon, on your well-earned recognition. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Curtis F. Morgan, Professor of History, and I am uh, presenting the Outstanding Achievement in History Award to Ms. Selena Majahid Schwedhelm. Selena is one of the most interesting students I've ever known. She first appeared in my World Civ survey way back in summer 2019 and immediately impressed me with her willingness to speak up in class. She went on to enroll in my Middle East Civilizations course in the spring of 2020, which you will all recall was when COVID hit. Now, Selena's full name is Selena Majahid Schwedhelm. She was born in Mexico, then adopted into a German and Middle Eastern family. She was raised Muslim and her family moved to the United States. Both of her parents hold doctoral degrees and speak six languages, very impressive. In the Middle East course, I had the class participate in something called the Global Solutions Sustainability Challenge, a program sponsored by the State Department and other organizations the twins American Community College student teams with teams from Jordan and Iraq to create environmentally sustainable business plans. Selena took the lead in organizing and inspiring her teammates in both the US and Iraq to persevere in their efforts. Although our team did not win a prize, everyone benefited from the unique experience. And as a Muslim, Selena quickly won the trust of our Iraqi partners. As my students will tell you, I approach teaching world history as a story of people crossing boundaries, and few people I have met have crossed as many boundaries in her short life as Selena has. She hopes to complete her college degree and in future work with children around the world affected by war and violence, as well as assisting migrants. Uh, she herself is mother to three special needs children she is so multifaceted a person that I, I have not even begun to tell you about her. I'm very impressed, and I'm honored to present this year's Outstanding Achievement in History Award to Selena Majahid Schwedhelm. Thank you. Buenas tardes a todos. This is Polly Nusselrode. I'm Associate Professor of Spanish and Lord Fairfax, and it is my great pleasure to introduce again Shannon Parente. This time is our outstanding graduate in Spanish. So Shannon's love for language is really shining through in this event, which um, is well deserved. Shannon has been with me for all four semesters of our Spanish program and has never ceased to be anything but a shining star. Her use of the language is exceptional, but what really stands out is her constant pursuit to understand and grow. I know when I get a message from Shannon that says, I have a few questions, they will be excellent questions that inspire further conversation and a deeper understanding of the language. Her final project, which involved pre preparing a dish under the tutelage of native speakers was just exceptional not only in the experience she created, but in her insightful and humorous reflection. Shannon has taken advantage of every opportunity to use Spanish outside the classroom. She has worked as a tutor for LSCC students and was quick to sign on when offered the opportunity to partner with an English language learner and begin a mutually beneficial conversation ritual. Shannon will attend James Madison University, go Dukes, uh, where I hope to talk her into being a Spanish minor. She is an absolute delight to work with and to know, and I can't wait to see all she achieves in the future. Enhorabuena, amiga. Good evening. I am Craig Santacola, Dean of the School of Professional Programs. Our programs are designed with the career interests and practical needs of today's learner in mind. With degree and certificate options that span from healthcare to business, from administration of justice to information systems technology, 
and from health information management to trades and technical education, many of our programs are nationally recognized and accredited and offer articulation agreements and transfer pathways to four-year colleges and universities. The school and its programs are committed to applied and engaging learning environments taught by world-class faculty dedicated to student success. And that's what we're here to celebrate tonight, student success. Each student recognized has maintained their work ethic and determination and persevered in light of a ridiculous amount of challenge, disruption, and uncertainty during a pandemic. And it's with honor and pride tonight that we recognize the outstanding achievement of the students in the School of Professional Programs. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rachel Dotson, Associate Professor of Business Management and Administration. I am here today to present the Maurice J. Duffy Outstanding Business Award and the Outstanding Achievement and Accounting Award. The Maurice J. Duffy Outstanding Business Award honors Maurice J. Pat Duffy, a dedicated professor of business at Lord Fairfax Community College for over 20 years, who was named Professor Emeritus shortly after his retirement in 1990. This year's Maurice J. Duffy Outstanding Business Award winner is Colin Rankin. I had the distinct pleasure of having Colin in numerous business courses during his time at Lord Fairfax. In class, Colin was an exceptional student, leading by example, going above and beyond for each and every assignment and providing guidance to his peers when needed. Colin is uniquely able to look at a business issue from a number of different perspectives using critical thinking skills to reach a found solution. Colin and his family reside in Strasburg, Virginia. He is a proud first-generation college student and now graduate. In his own words, Colin shared his experience at Lord Fairfax. It has been an absolute pleasure and blessing to attend and graduate from Lord Fairfax. I appreciate the insight and education bestowed upon me by my professors throughout my educational endeavors. Colin's dedication, determination, and perseverance will carry him far in life. Colin is graduating with an Associate of Arts and Sciences degree in Business Administration and plans to pursue his bachelor's degree in the very near future. In his spare time, Colin enjoys hiking, fishing, landscaping, and traveling, both to Germany to visit his family, as well as exploring as much of the world as possible. Please join me in congratulating Colin Rankin as the Maurice J. Duffy Outstanding Achievement and Business Award winner. Next, I am pleased to announce the 2020-2021 Outstanding Achievement and Accounting Award. This year's recipient is Julia Wickersham. Julia attended James Madison High and Northern Virginia Community College before putting her academic career on hold to become a proud mother of three, uh, Melanie who's six, Kara who's 10, and Joey who is 11. She has spent the last year and a half uh, during COVID homeschooling her three children while simultaneously pursuing her academic goals, which in of itself is to be commended. Julia's accounting faculty had the following to share about her. Julia's experience created the opportunity for interesting and engaging class discussions. She worked well in groups and was always helpful to her classmates. Her excellent organizational skills resulted in assignments always being turned in on time, as well as, um, as exceptional responses to those assignments. She has a wonderful career ahead in whatever field of accounting she chooses to pursue. This spring, uh, 2021, Julia actually took our Accounting 298, which is our uh, capstone course for the accounting program. Her professor shared that she attended every virtual meeting and participated in the weekly Zoom sessions, contributing to the many accounting topics that were discussed with her fellow students. Over the course of that 298 class, Julia submitted six case studies, uh, which were very well written, um, had an excellent thought process and included uh, lots of lots of research in order to, to come to a conclusion on each of those case studies. She also expressed an understanding of people skills and will provide good support and guidance to others in whatever career she chooses to pursue. 
Julia is graduating with an Associate of Applied Science and Accounting, as well as a Career Study Certificate in Computer Science. While completing uh, both of the programs at Lord Fairfax, she was a member of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Julia plans to continue her education in both accounting and computer science, and uh, one day looks forward to a career in the accounting field. In her spare time, Julia enjoys programming, cooking, hiking, art, and spending time with her family. Please join me in congratulating Julia as the Outstanding Achievement and Accounting Award recipient. Good evening, everyone. I'm Beth Shanwolzer, Associate Professor of Health Information Management. I'm very pleased to, ana to um, announce the 2021 Outstanding Health Information Management graduate is Debbie Thomas. Debbie has been working on her degree in health information for a few years. She has taken two or three um, courses at a, at a time while working in the field of health information. Juggling work, home, and college, she has persisted while ma maintaining an excellent GPA throughout her entire college career. Debbie has been committed to completing this de degree from day one and has been an active participant in classes. She got to know her classmates and her prof professors and, was always, and it was always apparent that she wanted to learn more about the field that she had chosen. Congratulations, Debbie. We wish you all the best in the future. And please don't be a, a stranger. Also, please, when you see my phone number pop up at work, please answer it because you'll probably be getting phone calls asking you to take student interns in the future. And I hope that you will um, do that and still be a, an active part of Lord Fairfax. We wish you the best. Hello and good evening. I am Art Lee, the program lead for the Information Systems Technology Program here at LFCC. Tonight I am presenting the Outstanding Achievement in Information Technology Award. The recipient of this year's award is Danielle Rickard. Many of our students come into our IST program directly from high school, but others through various pathways come to LSCC to switch careers or to update their existing skills to advance in their current career paths. Danielle came to LFCC after already gaining valuable experience in the workforce. Danielle had been fortunate enough to hold a position in the information systems department as a clinical systems analyst after spending 18 years working in clinical engineering at Valley Health in Winchester. As she stated to me, Danielle was now, quote, behind the IT curtain. She was amazed and somewhat overwhelmed at how many different parts make the whole. Her job was to essentially act as a liaison between the cl clinical staff and the IT department. In this role, she was expected to be familiar with many components across the IT spectrum and to engage the appropriate resources during projects and to provide troubleshooting for various systems. She decided to turn to LFCC to give her the variety and depth of knowledge needed to be confident and successful in her job. To use Danielle's words, the IST program of study provided the excellent variety of classes I needed to give me, I needed to give me the skills to be highly efficient at my job. The classes gave me the more in-depth knowledge to confidently deal with the challenges of the workday, such as digging into an issue caused by incorrect network settings and troubleshooting issues. She has also discovered an interest in programming, programming and application development. Danielle Rickard is receiving her Associate of Applied Science degree in Information Systems Technology. Along the way to earning this degree, she has also earned career study certificates in Information Technology Foundations and Networking Specialist. Danielle has been accepted into Old Dominion University and will continue there to pursue her Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with the added goal of obtaining a master's degree. She plans to remain in healthcare, but hopes to use her experience in education to shift into application development to continue to support frontline healthcare providers. 
On behalf of the Information Technology Faculty, congratulations to Danielle Rickard on being this year's recipient of the Outstanding Achievement in Information Technology Award. Hello all, I'm Kathy Ware. I'm the Assistant Professor of Health Information Management, and I'm going to be giving the Outstanding Achievement in Medical Billing and Coding. So I am thrilled to be giving Jennifer Ashley Melkerick this award for the Outstanding Student in Medical Billing and Coding. Ashley, as she prefers, was a hard worker in this nine-month certificate program. She maintained top grades even as we shifted from the classroom to virtual due to COVID. And finally, she passed the National Coding Certification Test with flying colors. Great job, Ashley. Congratulations. Hello, I am Christina Simpson, the Director of Health Professions here at LFCC. It is my pleasure to be here this evening to recognize a very special student, Nurse Donna Kelly. She has been a shining light in the RN program since she arrived. She has the fierce determination of a warrior and the gentle hands of a nurse. Donna carries herself with a professionalism and spirit that we all want to see from our nursing students. Faculty comment on her pursuit of excellence as she persisted with a full-time job, being a single parent to three children and overcoming serious health challenges along the way. She is a leader and a support to her peers in the classroom. And her longtime experience as an LPN is evident in her critical thinking skills and her judgment. She's a hard worker, a natural leader, a visionary, and she understands the implications of setting goals and achieving them. Despite being a highly skilled and highly intelligent licensed practical nurse, Donna infused an appreciation for the educational process, seeing the value in advancing her personal knowledge and ability. I wish all students approach their studies with the attitude and effort that Donna has. She consistently inspires the people around her and we're eager to see the next steps of her journey unfold. The profession will undoubtedly continue with, um, to benefit from her continued presence. So congratulations to Donna Kelly on your outstanding achievement in nursing. Uh, hello, yes, my name is Samantha Bogger and I am the program coordinator for the practical nursing program. And this evening, I will be presenting two um, outstanding graduate uh, certificates. Uh, the first one um, is uh, awarded to Miss Brittany Ross, class of 2020. Uh, Brittany served as her class spokesperson, where she displayed excellent communication in her personal skills, when relaying information between her classmates and her instructors. In the clinical setting, her caring and gentle demeanor was witnessed by her peers and instructors as she interacted with her patients. In the classroom, Brittany has the top GPA for all of the nursing courses. Um, she is currently enrolled in, in the APO program here at Lord Fairfax Community College and is working towards her associate's degree. Uh, congratulations on Brittany on your academic achievement. I know it's a, a little late, but um, it's still just uh, just as important and you, you earned it. Um, my second award for outstanding graduate is for um, Ms. Carrie Berner. Carrie is currently a nursing student in the practical nursing class of 2021. Um, Carrie has some wonderful attributes, such as being, um, she's especially uh, focused on her um, goal of becoming LPN and giving her patients her, the best care possible. She provides excellent patient care and frequently assumes the role of patient advocate, addressing issues that could potentially affect the outcome of her patient's care. Carrie, um, on the other hand, Carrie is also very successful in the class and she currently has the top GPA um, for all of her nursing courses. Congratulations, Carrie, on your academic achievement and have a great rest of your year. The end's coming up here pretty quickly. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Dr. Ia Gomez and I am the Dean of STEM. First, um, I would like to congratulate all the students being recognized with this evening because today all their hard work translates into success. 
Our school is very proud to have a student-focused faculty who teach very engaging lectures and lab and uh, equip our students with the knowledge and the skills uh, that will give them a strong foundation to prepare you all to succeed in your careers. This year has been especially challenging um, and for our school especially too. During the pandemic, um, our dedicated faculty did not hesitate to do a tremendous job going above and beyond, ensuring that our classes, uh, though mostly online, continue to be engaging, interactive, and for example, challenging ones to teach in this format like physical education classes. Our math faculty have also had to become extremely creative uh, and have done an excellent job overcoming such challenge. Our science department has put together and deployed lab kits for hundreds and hundreds of students uh, so they will be able to perform lab activities, uh, meaningful and hands-on lab activities at home safely. Uh, with the help and support of our faculty, our computer science students have been able to even present their work at international conferences this year during the pandemic. And uh, in addition to all these, our school has been able to launch several new programs, uh, innovating and pioneer programs such as uh, data science, cybersecurity engineering, and most recently, we have been received the very good news that we have been officially approved to offer our Associate of Science in Engineering as a, engineering as a standalone degree. All of us at LSTC are dedicated to help you guys, students, uh, succeed. So tonight I feel truly honored to, uh, to be here with you celebrating the achievements uh, um, you guys have made our college and your families very, very proud. And for us educators, there's no better reward than seeing you guys succeed. So congratulations to all the students being recognized tonight, as well as the families and others who supported you along the way. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brenda Weens and I'm a professor of biology. And I'm here to present the Colonel Harry E. Rusum Award. He was a retired colonel who enrolled as a student at Lord Fairfax Community College after his career in the military to study agriculture and natural resources. He was a strong supporter of LFCC's science program, and this award was established by his wife to honor his passion and support for the college and its students. The Rusum Award recipient is selected based on a student's grade point average in conjunction with their interest in pursuing a career in the agricultural and natural resource fields. This year's recipient, Natasha Ortega, will be earning her Associate of Science degree and transferring to Virginia Tech to pursue a major in wildlife conservation. Natasha was a hardworking and enthusiastic student in the biology classes she took from me during her first year at LFCC. Throughout the year, I watched her improve her study habits and successfully persist through the shift from in-person to online classes in the middle of the second semester due to the pandemic. That's a common um, successful story of our students this year. I believe this says a lot about um, their commitment and hers to their education, to um, it says a lot about their self-discipline and their determination to succeed. This summer, Natasha plans to intern at the Blue Ridge Wildlife Center to begin her work in wildlife conservation. I regret that I cannot hand this award to you personally, Natasha. But in lieu of that, I wish you the best at Virginia Tech and beyond. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Melissa Stang, Professor of Computer Science. The student being recognized for computer science is a first year generation student earning a computer science career study certificate, as well as the Associate of Science in Science Computer Science Specialization degree, and is one of the few K-12 educators qualified for the CS licensure add-on by the Virginia Department of Ed. Not only did she excel at her time at Lord Fairfax, she taught full-time at Skyline High School during the challenging COVID year. She also attended the Virginia Cybersecurity Education Conference this year and earned the top engagement learning prize 
surpassing industry professionals in both Dr. Kaufman and I. Melissa Fox realized technology has become more important than ever, and she needed to learn more in, better, in order to better assist her K-12 students. When asked for what advice she would give others, Missy stated that they should never give up because no matter what is happening in your life, if you set your mind to something, you can achieve it. Congratulations again, Missy, on your recognition. You are a true role model in computer science. I'm Henry Kaufman. I'm professor of cybersecurity. I'm here to give the Outstanding Achievement Cybersecurity Award to Kelly Walters. I think it's kind of interesting is that Lord Fairfax serves another niche of the population student, and that's called the career switcher. Kelly Walter is a career switcher, as a number of my students are. They start out one area and they decide that they want to do something else. Well, Kelly started out in the 80s, and she has more degrees than I do, I think. But anyway, she started out in the in the 1980s with a, a fine arts degree, a master's and a bachelor's in art studio. So she went from art studio to cybersecurity, but in the meantime, she got a bachelor's of, of arts in uh, psychology. I guess she had some premonition that she was going to have me 20 years down the road as a crazy professor. So she took psychology. She taught art. She actually had some gallery shows. She did very well at that. But she decided that she wanted to change careers because she never really achieved the full-time art, which is okay. A lot of people don't achieve uh, the, a goal, initial goal, but she wanted to do a career switch. And, the, and she learned about cybersecurity through media, public, through talking to people, through everything. And she decided to go into it. So she changed her careers to uh, cybersecurity. She came into the program very timid. Sorry, Kelly, I'm going to say it. Very timid. And um, she progressed nicely. In fact, very motivated, very dedicated. She learned a lot in networking, in cyber defense, in programming. She was just outstanding. She was just moving right up the chain. And then she got on the cybersecurity competition, competition team, which showed to be a whole world for her. She learned how to do different scenarios, how to solve those how to take classroom concepts and develop them into real applications. And she was on the team that turned out to be the top 50 in the National Cyber League out of 900 and some teams. And she did very well. And the captain actually marked her as being the most improved player that he had on the team. That says a lot about Kelly. So if I wanted to put in some kind of a Analogy perspective, she seemed to start at the back backpack of the NASCAR race, but now she's in the top 10 of the NASCAR race heading to the finish. So congratulations, Kelly Water, on outstanding achievement in cybersecurity. Good evening, my name is Sam Dillander. I'm a professor of chemistry. This year's Dr. Abula McGovern Award for Outstanding Achievement in Science um, um, goes to Lissandra Sandoval. Dr. McGovern, was a professor of biology when LFC first opened in 1970. Those who worked with her said that she often had words of wisdom, was always willing to help, and was a model for continuous improvement. On um, Sandra, you have been described as hardworking, pleasant, and helpful to other students by your professors. You have excelled in a variety of biology, math, and chemistry courses while completing your science degree and health professions here at LFCC. Um, in the world of science, it will always be impossible to say that you have all the answers, but I know that you will continue to seek solutions in years to come, to make a difference in our community. Congratulations, congratulations again to Lissandra Sandoval. Uh, my name is Cyril Petrus. I'm an associate professor of mathematics at Lord Fairfax Community College. The 2021 Outstanding Achievement Mathematics recipient is Shane Sawyer. I had the pleasure of teaching Shane Calculus One calculus two and linear algebra. Professor Jeremiah Dyke taught chain calculus three and differential equations. In each of these higher level mathematics courses, Shane excelled. Professor Dyke and I both sang his praises as he was at the top of the class in each of these courses. Shane is a great student to have in class. Not only is he a bright man, but he's also eager, has zeal to learn mathematics, and he works hard to understand every little detail. He is also eager to work and to help his fellow students. 
This is a trait that every professor would love to have in his or her class. After talking with Shane this semester, I learned about how he started out thinking about mathematics. Shane was a precocious child at an early age of six or seven years old, he started to think about numbers and concepts. Shane told me when he was this young, he would think about numbers while his mother drove him to school. He started to think about the number 1 million, which is a very large number for a young child. Then he thought, what about a million million? And even though this was an extremely large number, he realized that he could always add one to that number and make it bigger. Without realizing it at the time, Shane was developing, developing an idea of infinity. On another occasion, Shane posed this question to his mother. Picture him holding his hands wide apart. Then he told his mother, what if I cut the distance in half, then cut it in half again, then again, then again? When will my hands touch? His mother explained that they never would because there would always be half that distance left. This is the idea of taking a limit as x approaches zero. This limit concept and the concept of infinity are two major components that drive calculus. And Shane was trying to understand this in the second or third grade. Shane plans on getting his bachelor's degree in astrophysics or aerospace engineering, but he doesn't want to stop there. He wants to continue onward until he earns his PhD and to do research in cosmology or space exploration. With Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos starting up their own space exploration, I can see Shane's career moving in the same direction and achieving comparable magnitude. The stars are the limit. Did you notice how I put that in there? I feel very confident that Shane will continue his education and do some significant research in the field of physics and the universe. The thoughts of the six or seven year old child have expanded to the quest for knowledge on a much larger scale. Shane is the type of person who will constantly be learning. He will ask the questions that perplex him. He will continue until he answers these questions because he has that kind of drive. He needs to know, he needs to understand. For these reasons, we have chosen Shane Sawyer to be the recipient of the 2021 Outstanding Achievement in Mathematics. Congratulations, Shane. Good evening, my name is Stacy Ellis. I'm an Associate Professor of Health, Physical Education and Recreation at Lord Fairfax. And tonight it is my great privilege to award Christine Villatoro as the 2021 Outstanding Recreation and Outdoor Leadership graduate. Christine is a returning student who has always had a passion for hiking, camping, and spending time in nature. While she started at NOVA 30 years ago to become a park ranger, her life took her in another direction, which included raising a family with three kids and working as a contractor with VDOT. With the loss of her father in 2015 to cancer and her daughter uh, in 2019 to an impaired driver, Christine again found herself turning to nature for healing. While we could stop there and realize that the struggles that Christine has overcome is truly amazing, that is only the beginning of her story. Christine enrolled at LFCC and she hit the ground running in the hiking community. Christine has started the Blue Ridge chapter of the Potomac Appalachian Trail Club. Uh, the PATC is a nonprofit organization which is um, responsible for volunteer efforts, education, advocacy, um, protecting trails and lands of the Appalachian Trail. She was also voted in as the coordinator of outreach for the PATC. She runs the Wild Wimper Wild Women Trampers PATC hiking group and is an advocate for diversity and inclusion in the outdoors. She is also heavily involved in the Appalachian Trail Conservancy and is always sending me training opportunities and professional contacts. In fact, she is now on her way to attend the She Can Adventure Conference, which is focused on women in outdoor leadership. Her recreation program practicum uh, this spring included partnering with Frederick County Parks and Recreation to revive their guided hike uh, and hike lecture series, which actually has led to employment of some of her recreation classmates. Currently, Christine is pursuing her forest therapy certification and Christine's goal is to continue on to a four-year institution to pursue therapeutic recreation slash outdoor therapy and open a nonprofit facility to help others who are grieving. 
Christine was an absolute joy to have in class and contributed so very much. I'm excited to watch her academic, professional, and personal journey flourish as she continues to work towards her recreation outdoor leadership goals. Congratulations, Christine. I am Jim Brumbaugh, and one of my roles at the college is co-advisor of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society at the Middletown campus. The 2021 All-USA Academic Team is sponsored by Cengage with additional support from Phi Theta Kappa and the American Association of Community Colleges. The All-USA program honors students seeking an associate degree or credential. Students were selected for their intellectual rigor, academic achievement, leadership, and civic growth, and for extending their educational experiences to better themselves, their colleges, and their surrounding communities. These students were nominated by their colleges. We had three awardees on the Virginia academic team from our Middletown campus. Christina Cherry is a medical assistant at Savita Health of Front Royal and full-time student at Lord Fairfax Community College. A single mother of one, Christina went back to school to obtain the education to better be able to support her daughter and herself. After completing her associate LFCC next spring, Christina is planning on transferring to Shenandoah University to complete her BSN. A volunteer EMT for over 10 years, she has a passion for helping others. Outside of school and work, she and her daughter enjoy horseback riding, taking care of their many animals, and spending time with friends and family. Congratulations, Christina Sherry. Cheyenne Himmelright. Is, uh, is earning an associate in human services at LFCC and will be attending Liberty University in the fall to earn a bachelor's in social work. She says, I've always known my passion was to help people, but LFCC has helped me explore my interests and narrow down the field that I was best suited to. I now feel equipped to pursue my dreams and goals to make a difference in people's lives. Congratulations, Cheyenne. Lexi Wallace. Lexi Wallace graduated from LFCC with an associate's degree in liberal arts and is now attending Liberty University. She will graduate in spring of 22 with a major in graphic design and a minor in studio art. And her goal is to become a traveling freelance designer. Congratulations to all three of this year's Virginia academic team at Middletown campus. Good evening, I'm Catherine Clues, and I'm pleased to be here this evening on behalf of the Grisdale Family Veterans Fund. This endowed fund was created in 2014 by Lieutenant Colonels Ann and Ernie Grisdale on behalf of their family to honor veterans who have served their country through military service. Ernie and Ann believe that education and educational opportunities are essential for our nation's future and would like to ensure those who have sacrificed so much have an opportunity to further their own education. Each year we honor a veteran who excelled in their studies and particularly studies of the sciences since Ernie taught chemistry at Lord Fairfax for over 30 years. This year's outstanding veteran is Donna Kelly. And as you previously heard, she was also awarded the outstanding achievement in nursing. Donna is a full-time student who has demonstrated a strong academic performance with the GPA of 4.0. She's a, she is a member of Phi Theta Kappa and will graduate this May with an Associate of Applied Science in Nursing with a Forensic Science concentration. In addition to being a full-time student, Donna works full-time as an on-call nurse for Blue Ridge Hospice. And while, while balancing these full-time ventures, Donna is a single mother raising three children who she loves taking trips with. In addition to this award, Donna will have her name added to a permanent plaque in the Veterans Center. We are grateful for your service, Donna, to our country and your outstanding accomplishments as a student. Congratulations, Donna. Hello, Epsilon Pi Tall is an international honor society for the professions in computer and technology hosted at two year and four year institutions. They recognize academics of students, educators, preparation for practitioners and outstanding professionals. 
Student members come from the CS, Cybersecurity, Engineering, and IST programs here at Lord Fairfax. It is my honor to recognize Hunter Bowman, who is graduating with an Associates of Applied Science in Cybersecurity and is working as a junior security analyst for the True North Group, where he started as an intern. He will be transferring to George Mason University with an ultimate career goal of being a Chief Information Security Officer. Hunter is a charter member of the Delta Phi chapter. Not only was he the chapter's first president, he did it successfully during the pandemic to increase the chapter funds, continue community service activities, and participation in this year's international induction ceremony with chapters from around the US and South Africa. We look forward to Hunter's continued leadership as a past president of EPT, and hopefully he will get to actually participate in an in-person induction in 2022. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Kelly Williams. I'm the social media and outreach strategist for the college, and I'm also the advisor for the student ambassadors organization at the Middletown campus. I'm here tonight to present the award for outstanding student ambassador. This year's outstanding student ambassador is Sophia Myers. It's a beautiful picture of her. Aw. Sophia is creative, organized, and eager to help. Even before she was a student ambassador officially, she assisted our team with special projects and events. Oh, <laughs> but what I learned about Sophia over time was that she was also passionate, bold, and a visionary. Sophia participated in the renaming committee this year and worked with our intern and I to develop positive and engaging social media campaigns. That was a first for us this year. See, she also provided inspiration and encouragement to prospective students and served as a dedicated mentor to her fellow student ambassadors. In every sense of the word, she is a servant leader and reflects the college's values of learning, high performance, positive spirit, integrity, and diversity. Thank you, Sophia, and congratulations. Hello again, this is Brenda Weens, and um, along with Stacy Ellis, who you heard from before, um, we are going to present the LFCC Research Symposium Awards. The symposium um, was held um, on April 23rd, and it was our 14th annual symposium, student symposium, I can't believe that. Um, it's where students present their research projects, um, students that were nominated by professors in each school of the college or from each school of the college. Our um, symposium is modeled after professional meeting sessions in which participants share their work with colleagues. The symposium is part of our college's focus on improving the ability of our students to find analyze and use information critically, basically to be informationally literate. So um, due to the COVID restrictions again this year, unfortunately the symposium had to take place online, but students rose to the occasion. Um, they had a choice of three format options to use when submitting their projects, either a poster, a slide presentation or a persuasive speech and they submitted recordings of themselves presenting their projects and each project was then judged by three faculty judges using um, cross-disciplinary rubric. So a wide, we saw a wide range of projects this year covering topics from chemical syntheses to ethics and seven students were chosen by judges to receive an award tonight based on their outstanding projects. So along with a certificate, the students will receive a modest monetary award as well. And uh, these will be mailed um, to each of them, um, hopefully this week. So your awards in the mail. Um, but before we announce the awards, I'd like to thank all the sponsoring professors and judges who volunteered their time to make this event happen. Thank you very much because it couldn't happen without you. So I'm going to announce the first awards in the School of STEM or that category, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And we have two award winners here. First place goes to Haley Lude, 
for her project entitled Buff Buffalo Grass and Its Impact on Native Species. Um, second place goes to Joachim Sakonikis, and his project was entitled Canonical and Uncanonical Amino Acid Synthesis Using Common Laboratory Reagents. Congratulations to both of you. And I will be, um, this is Stacey Ellis again, I'll be picking up with the Humanities and Social Science Awards. Uh, in our first place, we have Lindsay Flickinger with the Windigo. In second place, Rebecca Alexander with her topic, uh, Ethics of Advertising, uh, focused on cigarettes. In our Persuasive Speech Award category, our first place winner is Virginia Waddell with Financial Freedom. And second place, Vincent Parente, Train to Protect the Police Response to Mental Illness. In our last category this year, we had an overall winner of the VP Award of Excellence uh, chosen by Dr. Davis was Audrey Kerr for her speech entitled Meditation as a Remedy. We just want to congratulate all of our research symposium students and appreciate the information literacy skills uh, gained through the process. Wow. Congratulations to each of you on these wonderful accomplishments. And even though we're on Zoom, let's just use our reactions and give all of these outstanding students a round of applause. To our graduates, while much of your last year has been virtual and you've not experienced the in-person celebrations that we would love for you to have, please know that your diploma and these awards and recognitions tonight are a celebration of your hard work and the many sacrifices you've made for your education. And we are so very proud of you. And for those of you that are participating in our drive through Diploma Walk, I look forward to seeing you either Thursday at our Falkir campus or Friday at our Middletown campus. And to everyone, remember that we'll have our virtual commencement ceremony this Saturday, May the 15th at one. And we hope that you can watch all of our graduates um, graduate this year. Thank you again for joining us for this wonderful celebration. And I hope that all of you have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.